This is the front end developer portfolio that got me hired as a software engineer. In this video, we're going to dive into it and see how you can make something similar. If you're new to the channel, my name is Zoe. I'm a software engineer and former university professor who loves teaching others how to code. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. As you can see, um, it's a fairly basic uh, portfolio. There's nothing really fancy or jazzy about it. I actually got this um, this template from frontendmentor.com. So if you do, um, are you if you know them, you know definitely check them out. So yeah, as you can see, it tells them a bit about me. Um, you know, and just looking at this as a recruiter who would see this for the first time, you know, I have a little bit um, an about me section, you know, that tells you a little bit about um, what I work with, what I'm interested in at the time. Um, you know, I really try to list out the languages here. It's sort, sort of um, because, you know, a, a recruiter might have sort of a list of um, technology they're hoping for their recruit to sort of fulfill or understand already. Um, so, yeah, that's why I wrote those down there. Um, and I wrote where I was based and things like that, but I was looking for an online remote job, um, but just so they know I was based in the States as opposed to Canada or somewhere else. Um, and yeah, and then I shared a couple of stuff, things that I've done already. Um, and there's an easy contact me button that would link them to um, my contact page. I also made sure to link my GitHub account and my LinkedIn here if they did want to see more about me, if they wanted to you know, read more about me. Um, I made sure that that was all accessible. But the most important thing on my portfolio page is the like portfolio itself that actually shows you, you know, um, what I've built. Because really, after you look at somebody's portfolio website, which actually I built this myself, as I mentioned, um, you want to see the code, you know, that they can actually build. So let's take a look at my portfolio. I've gone back and forth between having like a separate page on my website and just linking straight to my GitHub. Um, it kind of depends on what works for you. I think both are effective um, as long as everything is straightforward and easy to understand. So taking a look at my GitHub here. Um, Hi there, I'm Zoe, Washington DC based software engineer. Some of my pa past projects include uh, audio file and planet up. These are actually the same projects I used to get hired um, back in the day. So that has not changed. Um, but one thing that I would recommend if you're sort of starting to build out your portfolio, definitely take advantage of this like custom readme section. Um, if you add a readme to your GitHub, um, you can just sort of fill it out with stuff that you want to appear in this first section on your page. And I find that that's been really helpful, um, you know, in highlighting what projects I'm currently working on, telling folks a little bit more about me, um, sharing contact information and things like that. Um, because sometimes people even stumble across you on GitHub before they see your portfolio page. So having that as like a go between, I think has been um, useful. But yeah, so you have your readme, you you know, share projects that you want them to really check out right now. Um, and then I've also pinned a couple of other projects here. Um, and yeah, my contributions have always been fairly strong. Um, so making sure that you have, you know, a lot of little green dots is also a fairly good idea. All right, so diving into the actual portfolio projects, as I mentioned, it was these two, Audiophile and Planet Hubs, were the ones that I used in my portfolio project um, that I sort of shared with folks. And these are the links to the actual sites themselves, but as you'll notice, I also have the links to the um, the repositories themselves so that folks can actually try it out. Um, an engineer can go and look at it and see, oh, you know, she's coded this like this, or you made these decisions. Um, so yeah, but taking a quick look at the websites first, let's look at Audiophile. Um, now, if you've watched, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I've done a tutorial on how to build this website in particular. Um, so if you do want to check that out, I'll link it in the description below or in the cards up here. Um, but yeah, basically it is an e-commerce website, um, which involves a lot of different moving pieces and which is why it's always been the sort of front runner of my, um, my portfolio website. So yeah, you can see that it works fairly well. Um, like when you click on shop, you can actually use it like a real website. Um, the add to cart works, the cart, you know, shows all these things, these very, very expensive headphones. Um, you can check out, you know, fill out your information. And then, you know, at this point it wouldn't actually charge you. Um, but it's a fairly thorough site, I guess. Again, um, this, uh, the, the design for this, it was actually from front end mentor as well. Um, so if you do want to build it similarly, definitely check them out um, or check out my video. Um, but yeah, just something that really showcases your ability to not just do like a single page website, but something a little bit more complex. So looking at the code now, if I open up the repository, you'll see that I also have the, um, the repository link, sorry, the, um, the actual hosted site linked in the repository so that again, if you come here first, you can easily get to the website. It's all about making things easy. Um, because when you have so many people competing for the same position, 
it's whoever's portfolio gets seen sort of first and most thoroughly and things like that. Um, so yeah, just a little bit of information here. I can actually change that status. Complete. No longer work in progress. It's complete. Um, but yeah, uh, the whoever is looking at it can go into the source, you know, check out all of the components that I've been using and how I built things. You'll see I use React Router. Um, you know, they can see I have a store. So, you know, maybe I used Redux. I did use Redux um, and see that I'm familiar and actually actively able to use these technologies. You know, one thing that I suggest to all of my students who take my bootcamp is it's not just about um, making the project like, okay, great. You can spin it up locally and yeah, they can clone it to their machine and like, you know, actually spin it up, but having it hosted so they can actively play with it. Again, it just makes it so much easier for them to say, wow, this person actually knows what they're talking about. Um, and especially if you make it responsive, it allows them to quickly, you know, play with it and say, oh, wow, this is good on my phone. It looks good on my computer, different um, desktop sizes and things like that. It really just makes things that much easier. So yeah, that was project one. Second project, was Planet Hub. And I'll open up the website itself. So yeah, Planet Hub, this was also a pretty simple, this is a single page site that just shows you a little bit more about, um, you know, the different planets in our solar system, more of like a game. Um, but I did get a lot of good feedback on this from folks who had kids like, like, oh yeah, my kid really loves, you know, the idea of your site. Like I showed it to them. Um, and that I think really helped out. Um, but unique scenarios there. But yeah, it's it's a really, really basic site that just shows, you know, um, the inner structures of each of these planets. Um, one thing, even just looking at it now that I could have done better was not making everything shift every time you switch um, pieces. But that, I guess that's to show you like, your projects don't have to be perfect for you to get the job, just like good enough, you know? Don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. Like this was good enough for them to say, you know what, she knows what she's talking about, she knows what, she, what she's doing, we can give her the job. Um, and yeah, this was, again, you know, just showing the components I was using. I was using React, I was using Hooks, you know, um, which, you know, some people weren't as familiar with Hooks at the time and just sh showing that I was up to date with the latest, latest technology. I was using SCSS, um, you know, just really showing folks that I know what I was talking about. And then a final project that I have shared on and off is this feedback project. Um, this is the one, one of the, I think, more important ones I used when I was trying to apply for my most recent position um, because it's not just um, a thorough site. It uses Next.js, it uses Material UI, it uses TypeScript, which if you notice my other two projects use JavaScript, but knowing TypeScript is sort of desirable um, in the coding space. Um, you'll see that it's 94.9% .9 TypeScript. But yeah, it doesn't work as well anymore because I had it sort of actively working um, when I had built it, you know, it's linked to a backend and things like that. But essentially what it was, you could create a new piece of feedback, new feedback, and I had it populated with like um, new feedback. And then you had a category you could choose for the feedback and then you could add, you know, details about your feedback. Um, and then it would show up on this page. As I said, the back end is no longer active for this, which is why you're not seeing it, but at the time it worked perfectly. Um, but taking a look at the code, which I think is actually more interesting, um, you can see all of the different um, config files here at tsconfig, which I set up to work specifically with Supabase and the things that I was working with at the, at the time. Um, I use Supabase to, you know, get the list of feedback. Again, just connecting to a back end, showing that I could do a lot more than just straight up front end development, but I could actually um, build more of a full stack application. And then I think one thing that was really useful, if you take a look at the components um, folder here, I created a separate components folder and I just had it so organized, like literally every single component I use that involved some level of complexity had its own folder and had its own file. And I think that really maybe would have been what stuck out because um, if you're, you know, a hiring manager or you're an engineer on the team I'm going to work with, seeing that there is, that I'm able to execute to such a high level of detail, um, granted this project took a while to make, but you know, I'm able to execute and keep things maintained and organized, um, does bodes well for you, you know, me joining your team, if that's something your team values, which I think most engineers do. Um, but yeah, no, this was that, this was like sort of that third project that I created, um, when I was looking for a job, the final, the most recent time. And I think that was really what pushed me over the edge. But yeah, uh, prior to having stuff on my GitHub, I did have just a, a separate page on my, um, on my portfolio website. So when you click this, it actually just brought up a page like this and it had a screenshot 
and each of those projects listed down there. So that's another way that you could do that. Um, and then just link the repository and link the actual, um, the actual project itself. That's another way about going about it, but it kind of depends on what works better for you. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If you do want to see a further deep dive into, you know, um, the projects themselves, you can definitely check out the audio file project. And if you do want to see a resume review, sort of like a look at what resume I had at the time and how that helped me, uh, leave a comment down below. If you do want to check out that audio file project, check out this video up here and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.